It only lasts five days per month, but there's a growing body of literature indicating that it has potent anti-cancer effects. But is it even worth it? And is it for people with cancer as it is for people trying to prevent cancer? I'm talking about, as some of you might already be aware, the FMD, or Fasting Mimicking Diet. Essentially, it's a five-day diet that is very low calorie and especially low protein. It was popularized by a researcher named Dr. Walter Longo, and some of my earlier content, like uh, this from six years ago, covered some of the early studies on FMD. Good gracious. How things have changed for the better. Moving on though, since then, the early days looking at mice and a small amount in humans, there's been more evidence that fasting mimicking diets do translate to better cancer outcomes, like here, where cancer patients were enrolled into a trial and randomized to undergo a fasting mimicking diet every month or not, known as the control. If the lines go to the right and stay further up, that's a better cancer outcome. Clearly, the FMD-treated group experienced benefits in combating already present cancer. In fact, some studies in cancer patients have tried to tease out why the FMD works. One reason is due to significant reductions in cancer growth signals like insulin-associated molecules, if that's insulin itself, or IGF-1, so insulin-like growth factor 1. These molecules will when they're bound to cells, but certainly cancer cells, encourage growth signaling within the cell. In the context of already rapidly growing cancer cells, that's disastrous. So naturally reducing these molecules in our blood can be important. The main point here is that fasting mimicking diet has clinical evidence indicating its effectiveness against cancer. And one of the mechanisms by which it does that is by reducing the cancer promoting molecules in your blood, like insulin and IGF-1 as just a few examples. But that's child's play because the FMD does much more than that. In fact, in that same study in cancer patients, FMD has been shown to revitalize our immune system. That means that the FMD reduces a population of immunosuppressive cells, essentially cells that reduce the activity of the immune system and increases the amount of cancer killing cells. That leads to an overall shift of a less hospitable environment for cancer. Those cancer cells think that they run this town. Well, they ain't met this immune system. Then a tumbleweed goes by. Cancer draws its Colt 45, but an FMD stimulated immune cell ain't called quick draw gym for no reason now. Beyond the, right, beyond the revitalization and reaggression of the immune system against cancer cells, the FMD can also force what's known as the anti-Warburg effect. Essentially, a long time ago, it was discovered that many cancer cells prefer the use of glucose, so blood sugar, as their main source of energy. Because of this preference, many cancer cells do not use their mitochondria for energy production. They use what's known as anaerobic glycolysis to generate the energy that they need to function in the form of a molecule called ATP, the same energy molecule that all our cells use. This whole preference for glucose and glycolysis for energy generation by cancer cells is called the Warburg effect. Now, something that many people don't realize is that cancer cells don't just prefer glucose for energy generation, but to create substrate for another important pathway called the pentose phosphate pathway, which allows cancer cells to grow at a faster rate than normal. We won't go into the specifics now, but the key point here is that many cancer cells prefer using blood glucose. Now, the FMD reduces blood glucose, limiting the available glucose in the blood for cancers to feed on. So, what do cancer cells do? Well, according to this review, the cancer cells are forced to use the limited glucose that they have to access to generate as much energy as possible. That means two things. One, mitochondria become more active in cancer cells because the mitochondria can produce much more of that cellular energy out of glucose than glycolysis alone can. Two, 
less substrate is produced out of these offshoot pathways like the pentose phosphate pathway, limiting cancer cell growth and the ability for cancer cells to protect themselves. These two forced cancer cell changes lead to a slowing of cancer cell growth, but also cause more damage to the cancer cells because as mitochondria are more active, they produce damaging molecules called reactive oxygen species. This whole process, since it's the opposite of the Warburg effect, is called, aptly named, the anti-Warburg effect. As a quick word, there's much more complexity here with exceptions to these rules, but for some cancers, this is an additional way for FMD to stress cancer cells. The main point here is that a fasting mimicking diet changes the immune profile to be more anti-cancerous, as well as forces some cancer cells to be in a metabolically unfavorable position, stressing them and reducing their growth. All this is pretty impressive research, and there's plenty more on how fasting mimicking diets affect cancer, like the impact on the microbiome and cancer fighting, something called a starvation-mediated escape pathway. I discuss low-carbohydrate diets in this context and more. So if you're interested in a deeper analysis of this kind of stuff, consider checking out the Physionic Insiders. It's my premium research platform where I upload the extended version of this video that you're watching along with an accompanying article, actionable takeaways. And speaking to that, I designed a personalized fasting mimicking diet calculator and sample program for the insiders. If you're interested in trying the FMD for yourself without the hassle of figuring out if you're doing it correctly, then check out the insiders. You also get access to all these perks. The link is in the description. Now, to context and how can we use this all? Well, three critical pieces of context here. One, in the clinical trials, all the studies used FMD in combination with traditional anti-cancer therapies. None that I'm aware used FMD alone to combat cancer. The second thing is to point out that cancer is a diverse disease. So an FMD isn't always gonna be a good choice. As one example, people with cachexia, so an involuntary weight and tissue loss from cancer, may be in a poor position to use an FMD. That said, discussing with your oncologist and or general physician is important. And people usually comment, my physician doesn't know anything about this stuff. And that's fair enough because they have a lot to do. But that doesn't mean that you can't open the conversation with them. Your physician shouldn't be shutting you down or shutting these conversations down, especially if you mention multiple studies like we've been discussing up to now. And to be clear, there is even more. And finally, while we've been focused on cancer in the context of people who already have cancer, there's plenty of signals indicating that FMD can be preventative as well. So this isn't limited to a small group of individuals, it applies to many even if you don't have cancer. So then how can we implement a fasting mimicking diet? Well, it's pretty simple. Like I mentioned from the top, it's a five day nutrition protocol. It's done every 21 to 28 days. So at the longest, once per month. The nutrition protocol consists of this breakdown. Day one, 600 calories. Day two through four is 300 calories and the macronutrient breakdown is 10% protein. 45% carbohydrates, and 45% dietary fat. The nutrition is also plant-based. Like I mentioned earlier, those numbers can shift based on your metabolism. If you want it to be calculated out for you for your personal situation, I offer that for the insiders. The link is in the description. Otherwise, this is the easiest to remember. In total, that leaves us with this understanding that a fasting mimicking diet has clinical evidence pointing to its effectiveness in combating cancer, if you have it or not. FMD does that through reducing growth signals in the body along with revitalizing our immune system and even changing some cancer cells to become anti-Warburg against their nature, among other mechanisms. And for a large number of cancers, there's fascinating evidence that intravenous vitamin C could also play a major role in eradicating cancer, especially when paired with the fasting mimicking diet. I go into more depth on exactly that right here. Thanks for tuning in.